Hi there friends and neighbors, as promised, here is part two of our FreeNAS and ESXi build. So this time, instead of talking about some of the topologies and some of the ideas involved, we're actually going to do the build, or at least the FreeNAS install and the ESX uh, iSCSI uh, configuration storage and storage adapter. So what we're going to need today, in addition to our boxes, is a FreeNAS. Did I get it up there? There we go. I'm doing FreeNAS 9.10 and a little USB stick. So these are the two pieces that we're going to need today in addition to our boxes. Okay everybody, here we go. Let's start with our topology again as a reminder. So the first part that we're going to look at is this FreeNAS build. Now <clears throat> this is a pre-built sort of thing so I'm not going to do this live for you although I'll, I'll, as I said I'll give you the link to a video that that does but we're talking about a particular topology here so uh, by way of preparation I have my free NAS box and remember that I installed a second adapter so this 10 net again is going to be my management network and we'll see that I'm using the 10 net for my vSphere host and then also for ESXi and so we've got this management network idea uh, I'm trunking to my ESX host and remember that the trunk is there in this case for both the management traffic and the um, the VM network traffic. In a perfect world, I would have a separate adapter maybe for our management um, and maybe even have several adapters for my VM network traffic. And what we're also going to build is the second storage connection, and that is my 11 net. So I've got VLAN 10 and 11 sitting out here. And again, not perfect, not ideal. But uh, in this case, because I don't have a whole lot of power outlets and a whole lot of uh, switches that I'm going to deploy for the class, we're just going to use a separate VLAN. Okay, so let's go on over to our web browser here. And uh, by the way, just as a hint, hint, wink, wink, here is uh, RFC 7143, and that is the iSCSI RFC. And that is actually what we're using to communicate between FreeNAS and the iSCSI box. So SCSI stands for Small Computer System Interface and this is Internet SCSI or packetized version of that protocol. Alright, so all I did was open up my browser and go to 10.0.0.0.3. Uh, remember that that is the management interface for iSCSI. And the first thing that I have to do is go to my services. So you can see we've got navigation across the top here and then we've got our configuration items along the left hand side and really what we care about right now is this service right here we had to turn on iSCSI now once we do that we're ready to configure this now on this side there's all kinds of things that I can do with this uh, this box I am not going to work with any of that right so you can see that um, maybe we can look at or add uh, volumes I don't want to touch this right now because I don't want to destroy the configuration that I have ready for you. But again, for right now, we're, we're going to work with iSCSI. Now there are a couple of ways to build storage. We've got SIFS and we've got NFS, uh, but again, we're going with iSCSI. Now here is the iSCSI configuration, so maybe what I'll do is show you the task list that we're after. Yeah, all right, so here are the items that we need to complete and you sort of got to do these in order. If you mess around with the storage volume or things like that, um, that means that FreeNAS is going to get confused because remember that we're trying to use the entire internal drive for the SCSI configuration. Now remember also that um, I'm not going to go through the install of FreeNAS. It's very straightforward. It's a pretty good installer. Remember that you're going to come up on the CD or DVD and then you're going to install Right, so, and whether you decide to do a DVD to USB or USB to USB uh, is immaterial. It comes up pretty well, and then when you have the command line interface or the command line menu, uh, you're going to go ahead and configure those based on the menu items. And really, what I had to do there was give it the IP addresses that I wanted to use. And I'll show you a screenshot of that uh, later on, but really it's a, a fairly straightforward install. So coming back over here to the system, what I want to do is uh, go through those steps. So here's the portal that I created. 
Um, and I use the naming convention, pretty straightforward, doesn't show a whole lot of imagination. But here is the name that I created, and of course here are the interfaces that I have with my particular box. So I'm using 11.3 as my network, the uh, or my storage adapter. And here is the default port that we're going to use for iSCSI. That becomes important to us later because the ESX uh, box does this uh, dynamic discovery on that port. Here is the initiator created. And really what we're going to do is, this is just a comment. This isn't actually a label. We'll see how we tie these together later on. But this is where I'm coming from. And so my free NAS box is 11.003. My um, ESXi box is going to be 11.001, and that's how they're going to communicate. Well, let, next up we're going to go ahead and create an extent. Now the extent is actually the, the storage space that you're going to use. So again, here's my naming convention. Um, and then once you set this up, you should see that you've got this device that's able to be used. And this is the actual internal hard drive for my particular box. Now I think the default for this is uh, SSD. I put it to an unknown so that uh, uh, just for fun really. Um, but uh, other than that pretty much leaving it at the defaults. Now iSCSI communication is between an initiator and a target. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we've got this target name. And then we tie this to the portal that we're going to use to access this particular drive. So this is tying the parts of the configuration together. So we're tying the initiator uh, and the, well, let's see here. Uh, let me say this right. <laughs> we create this target and what we're going to do is tie these two together with the the target but what did the initiator point out well the initiator was this network and the portal was how we're going to get to it right but how do we tie together the volume the and the accessible network and the interface we're going to use and that's what we use the associated target for so here's the target that we just created, right? And here's the extent, and if you remember, the extent was the drive. So there you have it. That is pretty much the configuration. Now, as I said, you can do a lot more with uh, the FreeNAS box, depending on your configuration and your operation, but that's all we have to do really now to get this up and running. So let's go over to ESX. Um, remember that um, I am connecting to this via vSphere so so we just finished looking at this guy here so now we're going to go over and look at the two things that we need to complete to come over here uh, or on the ESX side so first up let's take a look at the configuration of the network so remember that we have to do two things we have to do a storage and then we have to do storage adapter all right, so the networking side of this, what we're going to wind up with is this configuration here. So when I build, when, what I'm going to add, you can see this says storage right here. So when you add a storage adapter, what you're really doing is adding a piece of networking. So here is that trunk line to my ESX box. You can see there's my management IP address, right, 10001. And that is the address that I put into vSphere that I want to use to connect. And then here I've got some VMs connected up here. And what I'm doing is building this separate storage adapter that connects to my FreeNAS box. Okay, so let's take a look a little bit about the, uh, the storage adapter here. Um, and so if we take a look here, when we, eh, maybe, what do we want to look at first maybe? Um, I suppose we can uh, we can pull up the, uh, the storage first. Let's get our heads wrapped around that. Remember that the ESX box has an internal data store, um, and that's this guy here. And, and when we browse the data store, we can see that I've decided to put some ISOs there, and then I've also got 
a couple of VMs. And the big deal here is that VM DK file, right? So that big whopper of um, a virtual machine set of files. So this is the collection of files. And then these are just ISOs that I use to build my VMs. Now we're going to wind up with a FreeNAS data store. And over there, whoops, good shooting text. And over there, I've also decided to test uh, storing some VMs over there as well. So essentially, they wind up being the same thing. Um, but that is what we had to add to get to uh, or to, to build the, uh, the iSCSI connection between the boxes. Uh, so we can see again that this is a, an iSCSI disk that we use to connect over there. Um, and there's my, my, the name that I gave for it, FreeNAS Data Store, again, being very clever, very creative. Okay. Um, but let's take a look at this storage adapter. Now that we've sort of got our heads wrapped around it a little bit. When you go to add your storage adapter, what you're going to select is um, a, a disk LUN. Now, LUN in iSCSI speak is logical unit number, and that's this right here. And we can see that this is iSCSI. Now, because we're using default ports, and because we've defined the adapter that we're going to use, remember that we had to, to add, we had to add this adapter. So when we come over here, we add the networking, and we go through this set of steps. We're going to tell ESX a little bit about how to get there and the IP address that we're going to use. So when I look at my storage adapter and let's take a quick look at the properties here. Um, I don't have a VLAN associated with this because uh, at least from the perspective of ESX, it doesn't understand uh, VLANs, but my switch does that I'm connected to. But here's the IP configuration for this particular uh, adapter. I only have one NIC, so I don't have to worry about traffic shaping or NIC teaming. Uh, but that is the networking side. So when we take a look at the configuration here, here's the really nice thing about the automatic discovery. So we can see here that we've told ESX, look, this is your IP addresses, and this is the interface that I want you to use to connect, and we're going to do this dynamic discovery. Well, where is the dynamic discovery going to be? Well, it's going to be on that interface, and it's going to be on this port. And so once you tell the uh, ESX box about this particular adapter and that you're looking for an adapter, you may have to wait a little bit for it to populate. But because we're using these settings, we have this... Uh, really really nice dynamic discovery again wait a couple seconds and it pops up and what you should be able to find is the storage that you've configured the iSCSI target that you've configured out there and then you just follow through the prompts alright and so that is the configuration on these two sides again not perfect not the the actual connection that we might want to use if we were building a high performance storage network uh, but there you have it. Now before we leave this interface, let's take a quick look at something else here. Again, what you're using your storage for is entirely up to you. You may decide to store your VMs out there. You may decide to store ISOs. You may decide to store the data that the VMs are actually accessing. Because remember that the point is not to build VMs, but the point is to use the VMs. And the most common example we have is storage, or, or I'm sorry, uh, server virtualization. Now here's one in this case we can see that the hard disk, that VMDK file, is actually stored out there on FreeNAS. But in the case of this other VM, we can see that its hard drive is stored here. And so that's how I'm going to do a little bit of performance testing and things like that. Well, there you have it. That is uh, the, the basics of how the components go together. Uh, next time, I think we'll talk a little bit about iSCSI and its operation. Okay, as promised, these are the links that will help you with your FreeNAS install. So the top two are right from FreeNAS itself, and that'll take you through the base install of getting FreeNAS from an ISO onto USB, and then um, the other one is the getting started. So very, very helpful, and those are the links that I actually used. 
The, um, the third link there, the YouTube link, is a guy that did FreeNAS 9.2, but it's almost the exact same thing, and rather than reinvent the wheel, I just thought I'd send you his way. Uh, it's a very good step-by-step -step install if you get hung up somewhere along the lines uh, after watching this. Well, I think that'll about do it for this video. You've been watching a long time here. Uh, next up, we'll talk a little bit about iSCSI itself and the exchange of information and its place in the universe. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening. Remember, this is networking. You can do this. Uh, and hey, may your packets always reach their destinations.